Last year in October, I went down a rabbit hole covering a mysterious company that was claiming to record your dreams. I left it on the theory that it was possibly connected to a TV series experimenting with a new form of storytelling. Ever since then, people have asked me to give an update on what exactly took place. I guess it's time to tell that story. To understand how this story ended, we need to understand how it began. Around October 2019, flies began cropping up around several college campuses in the United States and Canada, promoting a company no one had heard of, the New Newology Network. This organization was looking for volunteers for a new series of experiments that claimed to record your dreams. The flyers featured a phone number with an answering machine telling students that all slots were full, but they could still apply for future trials on their website. Thank you for calling the Test Subject Recruitment Center of the New Noology Network. Unfortunately, at this time, all of our volunteer roles, primary and alternate, have been filled and we are no longer accepting applications for the current stage experiments. However, if you are interested in applying for consideration as a trial member participant in future machine brain type experiments, you may submit an application at our website. The dream experiments were broadcasted live on Twitch, leading to tens of thousands of intrigued, albeit often confused viewers tuning in. Using MRI measurements, the experiments claim to show subjects as dreams being reconstructed in real time via the use of advanced machine learning algorithms. Even Twitch viewers were able to participate by choosing which side of the subject's brain to stimulate. As time went on, the NNM began sending out emails to those who applied on their website, claiming a new series of trials were taking place for an app known as Cinebody, where a chatbot called the Virtual BFF would give you tasks to complete. I am not afraid. Thousands did exactly this by repeating phrases, traveling out of their homes, and doing things they wouldn't normally have done. Stuck. I'm stuck. And the best part, they didn't even know why they were doing it. More than 2,700 videos were recorded and appeared on Cinebody, which later appeared on the site itself. But not everybody at this mysterious company felt comfortable with what was going on. First, there was the lab technician called Brian, who, unhappy with the lath of ethics being displayed by his employer, revealed the laboratory on the Twitch broadcast to be nothing more than a green screen illusion. Brian added even more confusion by stealing an important asset of the company's equipment known as the Holovan, sending pictures of it to loyal supporters through emails. Then, there was the Discord user named The Squatch. For those unaware, the fans of this strange rabbit hole created a Discord server where they would report any new information that would rise to the surface. The creators behind this whole thing were watching from behind the scenes and sent in fictional characters disguised as fans. One in particular called themselves the Squatch. They claimed to be a high-level insider at the New Newology Network and its parent company Bender Elmore. When asked to prove this claim, the Squatch provided several pieces of NNN data, but unfortunately, it wasn't convincing many people. That is, until he had posted a picture of the flyer that had been making the rounds in Philadelphia a few weeks prior, along with a cropped image of himself holding it. Less than a day later, some ambitious participants were able to match the shirt worn by the figure in the first image to none other than actor Jason Segal. Could they be interacting directly with Jason Seagal, many wondered. This is where many fans had started to make the connection with an AMC TV show known as Dispatches from Elsewhere, 
something that Jason was reported to be working on at the time. But before anyone could even think, the NNN shut down due to a security breach and the Squatch vanished from the forums. Immediately after, a new group of individuals began to appear online, calling themselves the Elsewhere Society. Almost on cue, a hacked version of the old Newology site reappeared with a different URL. The site was connected to Elsewhere, seeming to be a rebellious group against the new Newology network, claiming this company was the enemy of the people. The employee Brian seemed to be a part of this resistance. He managed to take over the Twitch account and began broadcasting live from the road behind the wheel of the stolen holovan. Intriguing to the audience, on the vehicle dashboard, there was a written list of some of the experience's most active followers. Of course, something didn't seem quite right. Many had noticed the road in front of him didn't appear to be real. Because of this, many suggested, maybe it was another ruse like the previous streams. After the third live stream, Brian revealed our suspicions were correct. He had faked his location so the Noology network couldn't track him down but now he was driving for real. Only two names remained on the list. One of those names got a visit from Brian himself, live on Twitch. Dudes, I just heard something pull up out front of my house. It's a white van. Dudes, there is a freaking white hollow van parked on my street. What? The fan known as Neckbeard turned out to be another character thrown into the Discord by the creators, and he immediately posted a video showing his side of the encounter. I don't believe it. Whoa. Okay, I wanna see if Brian's inside. Wait, 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 wait! Hold on, man! We all have a bunch of questions! Desi Darling is a bunch of questions! As the months went by, not as much updates took place. We got a few elsewhere instigated clue drops and an NNN sponsored My Machine video game being displayed by a Twitch streamer. We're dolphining. I think I'm gonna take, okay, so I think I can take it over here. Ah! This is the future. But the next big part of the story was when the TV series premiered. And now that I have your attention, I'll begin. The series began with an everyday man going about his nine to five job, wishing for something more in this world. One day, while traveling home from work, he comes across a flyer from a mysterious organization asking for participants to take place in a series of trials. Sounds familiar. Peter follows the instructions, which led him to an office building. Inside, they sent him to a room with nothing but a TV in the center, featuring a man known as Octavio Coleman. Hello and welcome home. Leader of the Jejun Institute. The Jejun Institute is actually a name of a previous alternate reality game where something like this actually happened to participants back in the early 2000s. They found flyers in the streets similar to the new Newology network and were sent to a random building featuring a man offering them to be part of something special. You will begin to notice the divine occurring all around you. A lot of things took place in this game, but to cut a long story short, most of the things you see within the first episode of the TV show actually happened with followers of the Jejun Institute. One moment in particular featured participants answering a phone in the middle of the street and was told to dance by their commander. Now we can get this transaction rolling. The time is nigh. Now listen quickly. Dance. Dance, okay. It is imperative that you now dance. I hope you dance. This interaction cannot happen without rigorous physical jamming. Now get off this phone and dance, motherfucker! Time is nigh, dance. The only way to proceed is through rigorous physical jamming. So dance! Dance, you lanky son of a bitch! Dance, mother lover, dance! After a certain amount of time, they were confronted by music and a dancing Sasquatch. 
It seems as though this TV show is about the people who participate within alternate reality games, and how much it actually impacts their lives, discovering something potentially magical in a world that feels hopeless, building connections with complete strangers across the globe. But the experience didn't stop there. Beginning in episode 2, secretly embedded passwords began appearing within the TV series, hidden in plain sight. When emailed to the virtual BFF AI, these passwords elicited responses in the form of additional photographic clues, that when combined with hashtag Instagram sightings, helped fans track down the whereabouts of the Holovan week by week, episode to episode, as it made its way across the country to an unknown destination. Why were they trying to track down this holovan? Well, within the series, it was mentioned several times that a woman known as Clara was missing. The goal was to find out where exactly she went. It was quite possible this holovan held some answers. With the rise of the COVID-19 pandemic, what had initially been planned as a live encounter with a holographic form of the mysterious Clara, transformed into a virtual live stream encounter as the game now encouraged its participants to stay safe by staying home. By the time Clara was revealed to be an actor merely playing a role on the TV series in episode seven, fans of the experience began to wonder what was it all for? And well, parallel to the story in the series, this whole journey had been about finding oneself, and most importantly, fostering connections with fellow human beings. To add to the experience, the trials where fans recorded themselves wandering to different locations and saying strange things were presented in the final episode of Dispatches of Elsewhere, blurring that line even further between interactive online game and TV show. As a final thank you, a series of clues led to a private video from Jason Segal himself. And now that I have your attention, I'll begin. Hello, my friends. Here we are, together again at last. What a long, strange journey we've been on together. Full of twists and turns, ups and downs, heartbreaks and joys, separations and reunions, the pairs of opposites on full display. You, my recondite family, have been a part of this experience from the very beginning. You are a part of Dispatches from Elsewhere in a way that you, and only you, can understand. I thank you for that. I hope that you saw yourself in our entertainment, some of you literally in our final moments, and the rest of you in the faces of your fellows and the journey of our heroes. I hope that you'll be a part of another journey with me someday. For those of you with the spirit to look up and see, that day may be coming sooner than you expect. Until then, my friends. The game actually continued after the show ended and took on a whole new life of its own. However, this part of its story came to a close. And hopefully we can discuss its new beginning in a future video. But for now, take care everyone. And most importantly, be kind to one another.